Pikmin is a very family orientated game. You said that uh, a lot of games seem ultra violent these days, and you said that post D3. Do you think that violence in games is kind of stunting the growth of the medium a bit? I don't think that, that violence in games is stunting the growth particularly. Um, and, and, and to be clear, I, I've, I didn't say, and I have never said, and I don't believe that the violence must end. You know, I, I could care less about violent video games. I've made them. I don't believe in the media effects argument. I don't think that video, violent video games cause anything in anybody, really. I mean, I'll, I'll argue that point with any social scientist you want to sit me down next to. Uh, but uh, I do think we crossed the line of bad taste at E3. We started celebrating things and rewarding people for things that are... Uh, frankly, pretty adolescent. We define, I mean, it's, it's ironic to me that in video games, we define as mature the things that are most adolescent. Uh, you know, I, I said it, I believe it, I still believe that the most most mature game at E3 was Disney Epic Mickey 2. You know, and uh, I, I just wish we wouldn't do that. So, you know, just. I'm not, I don't care if people make those games. I just, I just think that when you have one opportunity a year to talk to the real world and show them the beauty of games, to show them that we are an art form, to show them the variety of things that we do, and, and what we choose to do is just show the world this one thing. We didn't show them Brave. We didn't show them Minecraft. We didn't show them you know, the, the, the sports games or the wonderful you know, music games. We didn't show them, well, we did show them Disney Epic Mickey, actually, but, you know, what we, what we celebrated was the, the slow motion knife to the throat and the, you know, the teenage girl sucking a lollipop and, you know, wielding a chainsaw. And it just confirms everything that, that, that our critics wrongly believe about our medium. And I just, you know, if we had just shown the variety and beauty of games, I, I would have been fine. I, I could care. I, I I will probably make a violent video game again at some point in my career. You know, it's it's not the violence must end. It's let's let's have some taste, and let's let's not let's not say that's all we are. Do you think there's a kind of misapprehension then among kind of the creative element that if you're a violent game, you're therefore a gritty, mature game, and that somehow is sophisticated or you know uh, a, a kind of forward step for the medium? I think there's a part of the the, uh, the game development and publishing community that, that believes that you know gritty realism equals Tarantino-like violence. Yes, yeah, so sure. I mean, uh, and and you know if you look at pop door entertainment in, in every medium, I mean the you know look at 1903. You know the the, uh, the the great train robbery is about you know guys shooting people and robbing trains and stuff. I mean it's not like violence in media is new and it's not like every medium hasn't been accused of destroying the youth of America or Europe or you know the Middle East I mean whatever you know uh, every medium that the adults don't understand and didn't grow up with is is charged with exactly the same things we are um, I, I think that is in fact uh, uh, defined as mature by a lot of people yeah I just don't think it's actually mature content <laughs> uh, and um, I, I don't think it should be all we do. So given the choice, you'd rather develop a game like Epic Mickey? And well, right now, I'm, I'm in a place just personally in my career where I, I, I love the idea of making uh, entertainment for everyone. John Lasseter said those words to me when I met him for the first time at Pixar. We make entertainment for everyone. And it's like, why can't a game aspire to that too? You know, That's just where I am personally. I'm, you know, like, go make the games you want to make. You know, play the games you want to play. But uh, I think the, the, the great thing about, about games right now is there's room for everything. There's room for John Blow to spend you know, years of his life, one guy, making the game of his dreams. There's room for you know, a, a small group of guys at Mojang you know, to, to create something that literally changes the world. There's room for me to make an enormous you know, <laughs> AAA, 800 people working on a Mickey Mouse game that gets sold at retail. There's room for everything now. You know, yeah. and and that's what I think we should be celebrating. Uh, so yeah, I mean, there, there's just that infinite variety is what what's most exciting to me about games right now. And you think with with that room, like you say, there are there's room for more games like Epic Mickey. Would you like to see more games like Epic Mickey and its ilk? 
Come, well, know. I would love to see more games like Epic Mickey. I want to make more games like Epic Mickey. I, you know, I got I to gotta make a duck game. I got, I got my duck socks on right here, you know? I want to make a... I want to make a duck game. I've got some ideas about how to make goofy games. I've got, I've got all sorts of ideas. I mean, it's not just me. I mean, ideas are the easy part of, the, of making games. Uh, I, I would like to see more developers focus on reaching a broader audience. Uh, you know, sure. I think that'd be great. Where do you see the kind of future of console gaming then? Because you're developing this for consoles. Yep. Where do you see it kind of heading in the near future and its kind of future beyond the next generation? Well, I think uh, the future of consoles is is wrapped up in, in just sort of the future of games. And the, like, you know, I, I think I said this a little, this earlier, but uh, the, the the interesting thing is that the future of games is wide open right now. Uh, anybody who tells you they know what the future is is like is fooling themselves and you. Okay, are trying. Uh, I think the future of games involves uh, amazing console games. I think it involves. Uh, free-to-play games on, on social media websites. I think it involves the, uh, the incredibly powerful computer we all have in our pants pocket. Uh, I think ultimately it involves all of those devices somehow talking to each other and interacting with each other in ways that you know probably some kid in a garage has figured out that I have no clue about. Um, uh, in terms of consoles specifically, uh, I think it's, it's exciting that, that there's a, a new generation coming that, that's at least reported to be way more powerful than even what we have now. The, the thing I'm concerned about is that uh, we're going to use all that power to make even prettier pictures, or let's recreate the real world even more precisely, and we're going to focus more on how many, how many you know, polys we have, or how, how you know, look at that cool shader effect, instead of on more interesting and important things like, how about recreating what we're doing right now, like a conversation. <laughs> How about that? How about non-combat AI? How about more dynamic and interactive worlds? You know, how about letting me spill my, my water here in your lap and having you react appropriately? Uh, something that has never happened in a game. You know, if all we do is focus on, look at the graphics, then I think we really will be stunted. And on top of that, our games are start, going to start costing $100 million each, and no one's going to be able to make them anymore. If we focus on creativity and the, 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 uh, the new creative things that, uh, that, that consoles allow us to do, I think we'll be in great shape. If we focus on graphics, I think we're going to be in uh, a little bit of trouble.